What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the first episode of Instagram Suggests, a show where I try to become a better and faster digital painter through the suggestions given to me by my Instagram followers, hence the name. Now on average, a painting takes me around 8 hours to finish, but by the end of this series, we'll hopefully be able to bring that number down to less than 2. Along the way, I will also try to find a style that I'm comfortable with and a technique that works with it. I'm going to be fixing up my setup here so that I can provide better commentary as I'm showcasing the artwork, so I ordered some stuff in and with luck, they'll be coming in sometime in the next couple of weeks. I hope that by joining me on this journey, you will also learn a thing or two. Maybe you'll like the methods that I use and employ them yourselves, and hopefully that will get you to get closer to finding your own style as well. As you saw at the beginning of this video, we have 19 artworks to go through. We're starting out with a dramatic looking Goku. For this piece, I used this photo that I found on Pinterest as a reference to know where to put my light and my shadows. Ideally, you'd want to recreate the picture you use as a reference as best as you can. By doing that, you get to practice your drawing skills and you'd have less to worry about in terms of knowing where to put your light and shadows. Recreating a reference photo also helps you create a mental inventory of how light and shadow react to different material and on different surfaces. When your inventory has enough, you can go about creating better pieces of art because you'd be using all that knowledge that you gained in all your original compositions. There's nothing special in what I'm doing here with Goku. After my initial sketch, I laid down a simple quote-unquote ink layer and filled in the spaces of where each color was going to go. Now because I do a lot of photo manipulation, I'm very comfortable using different layers. I think it's very helpful to use different layers when you're starting out as well, because you can experiment and try different things without ruining the entire artwork. This way, if you don't like a certain thing, you can just go ahead and delete that layer altogether or adjust it separately. Once I was done and satisfied with work that I had done on each layer, I'd merge it down with the initial color layer that I first created. It's also very smart to use the liquify tool. This allows you to edit the proportions on your painting without having to do too much work all over again. At the end, I use the camera raw filter to adjust the colors. You can find it under the filter button in the top menu on Photoshop CC. And I think it's a very useful tool to master as well. Also, I think it's very important to say that I'm not too satisfied with the way that this turned out, but that's okay. I can go in for another four to five hours and get something that I'm really proud of out of this piece. But that wouldn't be the point of this exercise. All in all, this piece took around 2 hours and 10 minutes to finish and that is perfect considering what I'm trying to do here. So now it's all a matter of refining what I did here to achieve better results in the future. I want to say that I kind of overdid it with the highlights on the hair at the end, but that's okay as well. We learn as we go, and this is the first of many pieces that's going to help us improve.
I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing and giving it a like. You can also follow me on Instagram at gus.crow, that's G-U-S dot C-R-O, so you can help me choose which artwork I get to work on next. If you stuck around until the end, thank you so much for watching and until next time.